Childhood obesity undernourishment is a national epidemic, and it's more than a health issue. You know, it's, it's an economic issue. We talk about nutrition a great deal. I'm not sure the implementation of programs are where we would like it to be. If a child doesn't have proper nutrition, they can't learn. It sounds like a simple idea. Make sure our kids are eating healthy. But too often in New Mexico, that just isn't happening at home either because of circumstance, family hardship, or even parental neglect. That lack of nutrition has a big impact in the classroom, where students may struggle to concentrate when their tummies are grumbling. And it's the schools that are often left to fill the gap through their free lunch and reduced breakfast programs. But should it be the role of schools to feed our children's stomachs as well as their minds? This week on New Mexico in Focus, we continue our special Public Square series by tackling that question and much more as we put the spotlight on childhood nutrition. Public Square is our way of bringing people together for an honest and insightful conversation about the state's next generation of leaders, business owners, artists, and great thinkers. I'm talking, of course, about our youth. The community members graciously give their time and talents to hash out their concerns and challenges and then offer possible solutions to a group of policymakers, community leaders, and advocates who can take their ideas and turn them into action. We have six Public Square events planned leading up to next year's legislative session. All of our community members this month have a vested interest in the topic of nutrition in our schools, and they had no shortage of opinions on why this is a topic that should be important to every New Mexican. While I am so grateful that I am blessed with healthy, smart, active kids, I see a lot of uh, kids their age who aren't healthy. I grew up very, very poor and uh, the lack of food and actually lack of good food uh, was something that really hit home and stuck with me. So especially being a mom, I wanted my own kids to, uh, you know, have the, the best quality of the post possible could. I grew up on a farm. You know, I was in school before I realized that you could buy meat in a store. Um, everything came out of the garden, um, and we've come a long way from that. I think the, um, the issue of nutrition is really primary in our children um, that are living out in isolated rural communities, um, the Pueblos and the uh, various Indian reservations right now. It's imperative that, that our kids have nutrition, have good nutrition, that kids come to school ready to learn, and the only way they can come to school ready to learn is if they have full stomachs uh, from breakfast and from lunch. And uh, it's, it's a real passion to see the kids have every opportunity available to them uh, to make sure that they are ready to learn in education. I think it's healthy to have this dialogue. I'm excited. Um, I'm always excited about the opportunity to, um, to meet new people and um, new, hear new perspectives on the issue of school nutrition, child nutrition. Um, and you know the problem of undernourishment and obesity in this country. I think when you come to groups like this, you find there's a lot more common ground than other. I'm just hoping that we can have a good discussion and um, hoping with a lot of different people coming together and talking, we can find some solutions to some of the problems that are facing school nutrition. The more we learn and understand from each other, the more we understand what's going on, the better equipped we'll be to make sure that we hit all the avenues correctly and making sure that we've got the best and, and the, the brightest quality education for our kids. Our public square participants are just getting warmed up. Coming up, their deliberation about the challenges of making sure our kids are eating healthy at school. The group agreed on many aspects of the topic, but also had some philosophical differences on what role schools should and do play in solving the problem. But before we get to that discussion, Let's set the table with a little background information on the intersection of food and the classroom. Here's NMIF correspondent Sarah Gustavus with more. The first years of life are the most critical for brain growth and development. If babies and toddlers don't get enough healthy foods in their diet, they can suffer physical and mental impairments that may never be reversed. As children grow into their school years, healthy eating is linked to academic performance, concentration, and the ability to perform complex tasks at school. 
there's research that's found that in you know, infants and, and, and young children that um, even a, a, a marginal loss in nutrition uh, or periods where they're not eating due to you know the family's inability to get food that their brain doesn't develop as well as somebody who has a normal uh, nutrition cycle in their in their early years so at that level at that point it's very critical it's also important to a children child's ability to learn if they go to school hungry uh, they're not going to be able to learn as well as a child who's been well fed. More and more, New Mexico schools are playing a vital role in making sure our children get the nutrition they need to be healthy and successful. First, the classroom is a place where students can learn about what foods are good for your body and why an active lifestyle is so important. In many cases, school is also the place where students get their most healthy meals of the week through national reduced and free lunch and breakfast programs. These programs are aimed at low and middle income families, the folks who presumably have the hardest time affording good, nutritious foods. Currently in New Mexico, more than 200,000 students participate in the school lunch program. But as the economy continues to struggle, the question becomes, how far should schools go to promote nutrition and health? Should free breakfast and lunch programs be offered to all children enrolled in school? Advocates for expanded school food programs argue they'll improve education by making children more prepared. Opponents argue that the national debt is ever growing and this is not the time to expand social programs. Opponents also argue that feeding children is fundamentally the role of the family, not the schools. Most people would agree the real reason to focus on childhood nutrition is today's children are tomorrow's teachers, doctors, builders, scientists, and entrepreneurs. As a society, we need the next generation to be smart, skilled, and healthy. Most people would probably also agree that as of right now, many in that generation are not on track to be healthy. Nationally, childhood obesity rates have tripled in the past 30 years, with almost 20% of children ages 6 to 11 categorized as clinically obese. Almost a third of New Mexico children and teens are overweight or obese. And New Mexico Hispanics and Native Americans have higher rates of obesity than whites. Ironically, obesity and hunger are closely linked, since families without enough money tend to buy cheap, high-fat foods that aren't as nourishing. Oftentimes, healthy food costs more. We see that the actual price of fresh fruits and vegetables has increased significantly over the, over the last 10 years whereas the price of snack foods and sodas has actually gone down if you account for inflation. So, you know, if I don't have much money, what am I going to do? Well, I'm, I'm likely to be choosing the, uh, the, the sugary uh, soft drinks. I'm likely to be choosing the uh, fatty snack foods and, and salty snack foods. So what we have to do as a society is we have to find a way to compensate. We have to kind of level the playing field. This month on Public Square, community members, policymakers, advocates, and health experts take up the debate on this crucial issue of early childhood nutrition and the role of our schools. To get things started, here's Heather Ballas, Executive Director of New Mexico First, and our community participants.